Canadian prepper here. I'm just going to be going into a bit more depth about these Catula micro spikes because I had a couple of people message me about the things that I have on my feet at the beginning of my video intro. So I figured I would just demonstrate these here and show you how they work and perhaps tell you a bit about them. I just want to send a shout out to Survival Tech Nord. He's a prepper who dabbles in the technological aspects of things, but he also goes out and tests out his gear. He's not afraid to do the extended outings in the wilderness and stuff like that. has a great channel, and I would encourage you to check it out. He recently started a series where he's going over the basics of communications. What happens is that people like myself who aren't familiar with all the nomenclature that experience communications people use and I'm talking about radios, you know, um, walkie talkies, communication devices, stuff like that. You know, we don't really understand all the jargon that they use. So he's taken the liberty of trying to make a comms for dummies series. I can't remember what it's going to be entitled. I'll post a link to it here. So definitely check out Survival Tech Nord. Great channel. Great guy. So basically these Catula micro spikes, they retail for about 50 to 70 bucks. I've had these for about three years. They're pretty much my go-to footwear accessory for the bush for winter time. I have used them in mud in the summertime and they do come in handy. I would recommend them if you are doing something like the West Coast Trail where it's, you know, it's a coastal region so it's a bit wetter and there's lots of slippery logs, slippery rocks stuff like that. They would come in handy in that non-winter climate, but they're mainly geared towards the winter climate. They're made out of heat-treated stainless steel, so it's definitely a strong, strong steel that's not going to bend. I haven't had any issues whatsoever with bending, and I've definitely, there's been situations where all my weight's been on two or three spikes, and they still haven't bent, so it's a very, very firm build. I haven't had any problems with the chain links breaking or coming apart. I'm sure that's a possibility because there is so many, but it's just a, a very thick, you can see how thick that plastic is there. It's not, it's not cheap, that's for sure. And what's even better is that these, where the chain link meets the rubber, it's kind of reinforced, it's slightly thicker. That rubber there has a couple millimeters more thickness onto it just to make sure that you know this doesn't tear and it's just a very tough rubber it looks like it's gonna break but it's when you have the the weight distributed throughout the whole thing and the pressure throughout the whole set of uh, grommets there whatever you want to call them they're uh, it's actually very well distributed now I think you could probably have some kind of metal insert there just to give it a bit more structure but that may have been something they explored and decided not to do for various purposes this is able to work down to temperatures of minus 40 while retaining its flexibility i can attest to it down to about minus 30 i've used them and uh, they work just fine i haven't found that they come off at all that was a big concern for me when i bought them how much or, or how likely are they to come off when I'm using them and I haven't had that problem yet. I did have the problem once where I was walking on the on the incline on the incline of a mountain like sort of uh, around a mountain if you will and I was walking where one foot was lower than the other and so my foot was kind of angled and I did find that this Catula was hiking up the side and I had to readjust it every hundred meters or so to keep it on there but that was the only situation and that's not a very common situation usually you're going to be walking um, either on a straight ground or an incline or a decline and i haven't noticed any problems on an incline or a decline in fact you could run up an ice skating rink that was on a 45 degree incline with these they're just uh, incredible traction gear and if you don't want to go full on crampon which is not usually required for a lot of wilderness outings unless you're doing you know mountaineering and stuff like that <laughs> then these are definitely a great middle of the road thing which are far superior to something like this which are you know more for urban use right these are the yak tracks so 
definitely a great uh, tool to have. There is a two-year warranty, and I think that there's you know places that could be improved. There may it may come in handy if there was some sort of strap like this. You see here on the Yak tracks, there's a strap that goes over your foot. So you'd put your foot in here, your heel would be here, your toes would be here, and your foot would go in there like that. And this thing kind of holds your foot in there just to make sure that they can slip off. Now, like I said, I've never had an issue with them slipping off. Uh, they, these, This rubber has retained its shape. It hasn't stretched in the many years that I've used it. Maybe it's stretched a little bit, but uh, it's gotten a bit more flexible, but it hasn't really stretch too much. Um, they are hard to sort of get on at first, but once you break them in, it becomes incredibly easy to a point where now it takes me 20 seconds per foot, and I'll demonstrate that. So you can get them in different colors nowadays. Uh, if I could go back, I'd probably get them in a black, something to match my footwear. But they have a lot of prepping applications and survival applications. For one, minimizing slip and falls is huge in the bush, minimizing your potential to, minimizing the risk of injury is a huge factor, because if you injure, injure yourself in a survival situation, uh, you've already, you know, made a complicated situation far, far more challenging, so uh, the best thing you can do is avoid that twisted ankle and get yourself some sort of footwear accessory that will allow you to tread a bit more confidently in the bush. So traversing challenging terrain, definitely good for that. If you're pulling a sled or pulling a pulk, this will give you that extra bit of traction. Now deep snow, you're going to want to stick to snowshoes because for obvious reasons they float on the snow and most of those newer snowshoes have built-in crampon systems anyways. So, you know, you're kind of getting both things there, but this is definitely useful if you had nothing else. This would be uh, an asset in that it would ensure sure-footedness and it would make pulling those things easier because even when you're walking on snow, it can be slippery. Uh, even if it's not a snowy climate and it's a rainy climate, you know, like the coastal regions where it's constantly rainy and wet and slippery, slimy. These are definitely going to come in handy in that kind of environment as well. They weigh about 12 to 14 ounces, so darn near a pound. But, you know, when you think about the advantage they give you, and if you're wearing them, you know, it's definitely going to... You might not have to put that weight on your back, but if you're a person who's into the ultralight thing, then this may not be something that's for you. So I think there's a lot of advantages, like I've said, with regards to prepping, possibly even self-defense, because getting kicked with these spikes, depending on how agile you are, if you can throw a good kick, if you were encountered with a wildlife situation, you know, that could be probably not like a bear, or definitely not, it's not going to phase a bear, but a smaller animal, a smaller problem creature might, you know, be dissuaded by a kick to the head with these things. And they're probably going to stay on for the most part. But uh, yeah, I found them very useful. And I definitely would recommend them. Are they perfect? No. There's probably a, a lot of ways that they could be improved. And I think that uh, this has been the design, though, I should say, for the last five years with this company. So that says something that, you know, there's not a whole lot of things that need to be improved. And they originally had a one-year warranty. They bumped that up to two years. So... I'm not sure if they changed something since then. The product still looks the same as far as I can tell. Maybe they just got a bit more bold in their marketing strategy. But uh, I do think that they're an excellent piece of kit for you to have. So if you have any other questions that I could answer, I'll do my best. Uh, one thing I will say, there is a bit of a toe loop here. And it, they are labeled so that you know what side you're putting them on. And the one thing I like about these is that once you sort of break them in, like I said, they're very easy to put on. So even a person with not the strongest fingers and wrists can easily put them on. A lot of those cheap ones that you buy at Walmart are very challenging for the people who need them most, who are senior citizens and whatnot. 
to put on. So these ones uh, slide on very easily for the most part. But just because they slide on easily doesn't mean they're going to slide off. And that's the advantage of this very sort of sticky but thick rubber, which will perform down to the minus 40 mark. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.